So welcome back to uh, Financial Accounting, and we're going to begin uh, Chapter 2. Chapter 2 is called uh, Analyzing Transactions. And like any, uh, any chapter, we have learning objectives. So we've got five here. Describe the characteristics of an account and a chart of accounts. So in Chapter 1, we recorded uh, things that affected the accounting equation in columns. And I think you've already seen that if we... <laughs> If the company's got quite a few accounts and there's a lot of activities, recording them with columns, you know, under the assets and the liabilities and the owner's equity is going to become very difficult after a while. So we don't actually record stuff in columns. We record stuff uh, in accounts. And a chart of accounts is simply all the list of accounts that a company has. Describe and illustrate the journalizing transaction using double entry accounting system. So when we record the... Um, the transactions in the accounts, we don't actually start with going directly into the accounts, we do journal entries. And that's what I'll be doing in this little mini lecture. I'll be covering off all of chapter one and about half of chapter two. And then um, we come back in class on Thursday, I'll get into objectives uh, three, four, and five. Okay, so let's describe the characteristics of an account and the chart of accounts, which is our first objective. And if you're following along here, obviously we're on slide three. Counting systems are designed to show the increases or decreases in each accounting equation element. Said another way, anything that affects the um, accounting equation is a transaction, and transactions are recorded not in columns, but in an account. An account in its simplest form has three parts. So we've got a title to the account. Examples might be cash, land, in terms of uh, assets, you know, liabilities might have, we may have a mortgage payable. Uh, we have the owner's equity account. We've got the withdrawals account. We've got the revenue accounts. We've got the expense accounts. So each individual account has a title. And then you've got within each account, you've got a place to record increases in the account. And you've got a space for recording decreases in the account. The challenge that we're going to have is the rules in terms of how you increase or how you decrease an account are going to be different depending upon what side of the accounting equation you're on. I, if I were, this is a live class, I'd ask if any of you have ever driven in Bermuda or in England or in any other uh, country that was formerly part of the British Empire. And what you would have noticed there <laughs> is uh, that they drive on a different side of the road. So most of the rules of driving are the same. But rather than driving on the right-hand side, they drive on the left-hand side. So think of that example when we talk about the rules of the accounts in terms of how they're increased and decreased, which I'll introduce a little bit later on. All right. So again, key word here is account. And the account is going to take the place of the columns that we use to record transactions in Chapter 1. So speaking of Chapter 1, here were the transactions we recorded previously in Chapter 1. And notice... We had asset accounts, we had liability accounts, and then we had the owner's equity accounts here. And we either and we recorded stuff in the individual columns. And again, if you've got quite a few accounts and a lot of transactions, uh, this is eventually going to become so all really it's going to break down. We're going to have this huge you know, piece of paper to record these things on this huge electronic uh, Excel chart. So we want to come up with a simplified way that's easier to use. So that's how we're going to we're going to record transactions, not in columns. We're going to record transactions in accounts. So these accounts are often called T accounts. You might ask, why call it a T account? <laughs> well, it looks just like the letter T. Right? So you've got a left hand side of the T account and you've got a right hand side of the T account. Now, you got to bear with me here. The word debit may have meant something to you previously to coming into this course. And credit may have met something differently to when you first came into this course, particularly if you worked in some bookkeeping capacity or you're used to looking at your own credit card or your own banking statement. So for our purposes, the left-hand side of the T account is called the debit side. The right-hand side of the T account is called the credit, credit side. So uh, don't, don't think of debits and credits having a meaning, any meaning different than that. Left-hand side of a T account is a debit right-hand side of a T account is a credit. So here's an example of, uh, and these were all recorded by us previously in exhibit one back in chapter one. So we had a couple of transactions that increased cash. It was transaction A and D. And we had a couple of transactions that reduced cash. So the increases to cash were on the left-hand side. The reductions of cash were on the right-hand side. 
and the difference between the additions and the subtractions would give us our account balance. So the account balance is basically the difference between the debits on the left-hand side and the credits on the right-hand side. So here again, um, if you wanna figure out the balance that we came up with, so this illustrates here where we came up with the $5,900 balance is really just another way to illustrate this one. Here we put it in T account form, here we put it in narrative form. We say that assets that increased, um, transactions that increased the balance of cash were the debit side, and those that decreased the uh, balance of cash were the credit side. So these were our total debits, these were our total credits, and these was the balance in cash. So the balance in any account is the difference between the debits and the credits. Now, a group of uh, accounts in the ledger in, in, in the, for a business entity is called a ledger. So think of the ledger kind of as the book where we keep all the T accounts on the, on the accounts. And a list of all the accounts is called the chart of accounts. And these accounts normally appear in the order in which they appear in the financial statements. So when you think of the financial statements, think of the balance sheet. What do we start with? We start with the assets and we show that we get a total of the assets. Then we show the liabilities, and then we show the owner's equity. And then after we did the, um, we also did a income statement where we showed the revenues minus the expenses. So this is the order that the uh, chart of accounts is going to appear. It's going to start with the assets, and the assets are going to be listed in order of liquidity, which you may recall is how quickly assets are going to be converted into cash. And the liabilities are going to be recorded in order of also liquidity. How quickly do we have to retire those? How quickly are those liabilities going to be uh, paid off uh, in cash? So we look at the chart of accounts. We've got asset accounts. So these definitions we provided in chapter one. And remember, at the back of each chapter, you've got a list of terms. And you just click on there for their definitions. So assets things that the company owned that provide an economic benefit. Liabilities, these are obligations that we have to people outside the company. Owner's equity is the owner's claim against the company's assets after the liabilities have been paid. The owner's equity is represented in the balance of the owner's equity capital account. So we're gonna have an account called owner's equity. And then we're gonna have another account drawing or withdrawals which represent the withdrawals made by the owner. Then we're going to have revenues. These are increases in assets or on these equities as a result of selling service or products. And we're going to have expenses. So we're going to end up with different rules for the asset accounts, liability accounts, owner's equity accounts, drawing account, revenues, and expense accounts. This is what I've done analogy that I said of driving on a different side of the road in Bermuda or any other former British uh, colony. So here's our chart of accounts. So on the balance sheet, We've got, uh, these are my assets. Again, in order of liquidity. We define liquidity house, how quickly something's going to be converted into cash. <clears throat> so therefore, the most liquid of the assets would be cash. Then we show the liabilities. Then we show the owner's equity. So we've got both the capital account and the drawing account. Then we show the revenue. And then we show the expense. This is called the chart of accounts. This is the order that the accounts appear in the general ledger. All right, let's see if I can ask myself a question here. Which of the following would be considered an asset in the company's chart of accounts? Which take them in the order they appear. <coughs> accounts payable would be amounts owed to a supplier. That would be a liability. Factory equipment. Well, that's something that we own. It's, uh, that provides an economic benefit to the company. So that sounds like an asset to me. Travel expense sounds like an expense account. And revenue sounds like a revenue account. So which of the following would be considered an asset? I'm going to go with B, factory equipment, and factory equipment is indeed the correct answer. All right, so those, that was the introduction to accounts. And now and, uh, learning objective two, which we'll get about halfway through, double entry system. So when Lucia Pacioli, Pacioli came up with the accounting equation and wrote the um, wrote the, his book, The Applied Theory of Accounts, he said every transaction Everything that affects the accounting equation is a transaction, and it needs to be recorded in at least two places, in two different accounts. And after, after we record the transaction, the total of the debits has to equal the total of the credits. So we have what we call a double entry accounting system, which is that every transaction is recorded in two places, and every transaction has both a debit 
and a credit debit, meaning on one, the one account, the entry is on the left-hand side and another account, the, credit, the uh, entry is on the right-hand side, which is called the credit. And here are the rules, and we'll go through this a couple of different times. And in a moment, I'm gonna, they're gonna suggest a slide to you that you may wanna actually print out and use as a job aid. So notice the rules of debits and credits are different depending upon which side of the accounting equation you're on. So assets are increased by debits. Assets are reduced by credits. Liabilities are increased by credits and are re, uh, reduced by debits. And owner's equity is increased by credit and is reduced by debits. Again, my analogy in terms of driving on a different side of the road, depending upon which side of the accounting equation you're on, the rules of debits and credits are the opposite. So asset is increased by a debit, liability is actually increased by a credit. And you have our revenue and your expense accounts. So expense accounts are increased by a credit. Uh, revenue, uh, revenue accounts rather are increased by a credit and expense accounts are increased by a debit. So these are the rules for the income statement accounts. Then you have the owner's drawing account. So the owner's drawing account, this is where the owner takes money out for personal use, is increased by the debit and uh, is decreased by the credit. All right, here's the, here's the slide that I'm going to ask you to print out. <clears throat> Think of this as your Rosetta Stone. If you don't, if you didn't learn about Rosetta Stone in your high school history class, uh, when the French occupied Egypt back in the Napoleonic era, they had a tough time figuring out what it was, all those little symbols on the pyramids. What the hell did they mean? And a, a French soldier found a stone called the Rosetta Stone. And what it did is it translated... The, uh, the hieroglyphics uh, to, I believe it was Greek, and then they could transfer Greek to French and they could find out what all those different symbols meant. So think of this as your Rosetta Stone uh, for the rules of debits and credits. So you have this one piece of paper. So if you're confused, you say, okay, I've got a transaction that increases an asset account. You say, well, how do I increase an asset account? Notice you increase an asset account by debiting it. And if that same transaction increased liability accounts, you would increase a liability account by crediting it and so forth. So feel free when we first apply the rules of debits and credits to refer to this exhibit three as a job aid. So with that background now, we're gonna record a series of what we call journal entries. Journal entry is where we record the debit and credit. The journal entry serves as a record of when the transactions occurred and where they were recorded. So every transaction now under double entry bookkeeping got to be recorded in each in two places. Every transaction has to balance. So therefore, every transaction has to have an equal number of debits and an equal number of credits. So what we're going to be doing when we actually journalize the entries is we're going to ask ourselves what account is involved. Is it increased or decreased? And then if depending upon what type of account that is, is the deck either going to be a debit or a credit? So let's look at one here. So he deposited $25,000 into a bank account in the name of Net Solutions. By the way, when it's okay when you watch this, actually to have the slide 17 printed out and you can uh, use that as a job aid. So if you wanna pause here and print out slide 17 as a job aid as we walk through this, that would be fine. So the key, the way I recommend you, you do this is to ask yourself what accounts are involved and is the account increased or decreased and then apply the rules of debits and credits. So Clark deposited $25,000 in a bank account in the name of Net Solutions. So he's the owner of the company. So you ask yourself, what two accounts are involved? Well, he deposited cash. So uh, cash is an asset account. If you want to increase an asset account, you debit it. And it, the, where did the money come from? It came from him making a capital contribution. Capital, uh, uh, Chris Clark Capital is a capital account. And if you want to increase a capital account, you credit it. So don't be too worried down on the bottom here, the, uh, the, the posting of the entry. We'll get to that a little bit later on. What I want to do in this first go around is just focus on the entries, right? So if he puts $25,000 in the bank account in the name of Net Solutions, you're going to debit cash, you're going to credit capital. <clears throat> now, when you record the journal entry, the date of the transaction goes in the date column. The title of the account to be debited is the left-hand margin. And the amount to be credited uh, is the amount of it's then de there's a debit column. You put in the name of the account, you put it in the debit column. The credit to the uh, 
the title of the account to be credited is listed on the right of the uh, the debit account title, and the amount is credited uh, in, in the, the credit column. Okay, you give a brief description, and you will do the posting later on in step four. All right. So there is the actual. If you go back, there's the date. Always put the debit has to be first. If you don't put the debit first, it's wrong. So there's the date. There's the description. Okay. There's the debit. There's the credit. We'll worry about posting later on. And in terms of what happened, the owner invested cash in the business. All right. Now, here is another little uh, summary for you here. Revenue received. These are typical transactions. So uh, you might want to practice these transactions. So when you see them, you know exactly what to do. Receive cash from services provided. Well, you're increasing the asset account cash. So that's a debit. And the revenue is the it came in from fees earned and it could increase the balance of a revenue account. You credit it. Provided in services on account. So we didn't get paid, but we provided the service. So we're going to increase the asset accounts receivable. And that's going to be debited. And then you're going to credit fees earned. Receive cash from a customer on account. Well, that means you've got an asset and now that account uh, cash, which is increased. And that came, you had already recorded the, the fact that the customer owed you money. So you're going to reduce that asset account by crediting it. Purchase of an asset on account. So if you purchase an asset on account, you're going to increase whatever asset that is. And if you buy it on account, that means that you're increasing the liability accounts payable. And then if you go ahead and make a payment on account, you're reducing cash, which is going to have to uh, you're going to have to reduce cash by crediting it, and you're reducing the liability, which is a debit. Okay. Notice here, when you reduce a liability account, you're actually going to be debiting it. Okay. Paid cash on an expense account. Okay. And that's going to be a debit to the uh, either the asset or expense account, and you're going to reduce cash. Owner invested cash in a business. Uh, if it's either cash or other assets, so you debit either cash or other assets, and you credit capital. And then the owner took money out for personal use. You debit draw and you credit cash. So here is, a, rather than looking at individual transactions, if you want a little a cheat sheet or job aid here in terms of what the typical transactions that you're going to see, there they are. So you can refer to this if this is helpful as well. So let's look at some more transactions here. Paid 20000 for the purchase of a land as a future building site. Well, we, you Hurt the land is an asset account to increase an asset account. You debit it. And how did you pay for that? Well, you paid cash for it. Cash is an asset account. To reduce an asset account, you credit it. <clears throat> C, that, that solutions purchase supplies on account for $13.50. So supplies is an asset account. So to increase the asset account, you debit it. <clears throat> and you didn't pay for the, uh, uh, the supplies on account on cash, you you bought it on account, which means you can increase the liability account accounts payable. So debit supplies, credit accounts payable. Eighteen net solutions received seventy five hundred dollars from customers for services provided. So we didn't say that we uh, provided the services on account. It said we provided the services and we got paid. So you now have an asset account cash increased by seventy five hundred. And this came from fees earned and increased the balance of a revenue account. You credit it. And now E, uh, e Net Solutions paid the following expenses, wages, rent, utilities, and miscellaneous. These are all expense accounts. And to increase the balance of an expense account, you debit it. And you paid cash. And to reduce the asset account cash, you have to credit it. By the way, this is our first example of what we call a compound entry. A compound entry is an entry that has more than one debit or credit. So this one's actually got four debits and one credit. But notice, even though there's quite a few more debits, there's still the debits have to equal the credits. Uh, next one, paid creditors on account, $950. So you pay creditors, the amount that you owe your creditors, your suppliers is called accounts payable. To reduce the liability account, you debit it. To reduce the asset account uh, cash, you credit. Right. Uh, next one. Solution determined that the cost of supplies on hand on uh, November 30th was uh, was $550. Well, you originally had $1,350 worth of supplies. Now you've only got $550. So 800 of them must have been used up. 
So you have the account uh, supplies expense. So to increase the balance of expense account, you debit it. And re to reduce the uh, balance of the asset account supplies, you credit it. And now uh, I think this may be the last one here. The owner took money out for personal use. When the owner takes money out for personal use, you use the drawing account to increase the balance of the drawing account, you debit it. And to reduce the balance of the asset account cash, you credit it. Okay, so that's it. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause here. And what I would suggest, uh, let's see here if I can get out of this thing here. There we go. Um, so I want you to very carefully, I said the key slide here with slides, uh, Chart of accounts. Who's a chart of accounts? Yeah, this one here, slide 17. So if you haven't done so already, print out this slide. Uh, and uh, after you've done that and print out the slide, then what you can do is go to your textbook and go uh, to the uh, practice exercises, which are right after the key terms in the practice multiple choice. And you can do exercises one, exercise two, uh, exercise three, and exercise uh, four. So try those exercises. And that's where we'll pick up in class when I see you on Thursday. Okay. So I missed you on this Tuesday. Hope you had a good day. And we'll see you on Thursday. Okay, but please try to do those first four exercises. So until next time, adios, hasta luego, au revoir. See you on a Thursday. Be well, everybody.